everyone. Today we talk about the uh, cycles of water, carbon, and phosphorus, and the uh, sulfur and the diversities of the uh, different levels of the diversities. Okay, the water cycle here. We start with the uh, the water from the ocean or even lake and the stream here get evaporates. Evaporation means the way that the water, the liquid water, turn into the the gas. Okay, the gas form. And and after that here, water vapor here combine together to get a droplet. So to get a small droplet. Okay, and after they get combined together and get a cloud, this, pro this process we call condensation process. We also get another part of the water vapor from the from the plant species. From the process we call transpiration or gan kai nam. And after that, the condensation here, the the cloud from the condensation here move in into the continent. And after they get the cold climate, so they get precipitate. The precipitation here means the process that, oh. Uh, Droplet in the in the cloud has turned into a solid form or a liquid form. If they drop into the solid form, it will turn into the snow. And if they drop into the liquid form, we will have the rain. And after that, the, the rain here will run will run through the mountain or highland here into the small stream. Okay, run through the surface, and we get the surface runoff. Like this, they run through the surface and collect it in some area, and after that, some part of the water run on the surface here, run through the surface to this one and go to the lake and the stream and ocean again. This one we call a uh, groundwater. Okay, so in conclusion here, I write the summaries of the process. Evaporation is the process that liquid water turn into the water vapor and condensation means the water vapor turn into the water droplet in the cloud and transpiration is water from the plant turn into the water vapor precipitation means the water droplet turn into the large drop in the rains or even the snow the carbon cycles mainly here the carbon uh, on earth here will be the inorganic carbon and just only a few part here as the organic carbon so the, the inorganic carbon means carbon dioxide like this and here the organic carbon here mainly it is the carbohydrate as in the form of the biomass like this uh, it, it is cellulose basically or it sometimes can be the starch it's very few part so the carbon here composed of 50% of the biomass okay so the biomass means the organic substance even because include the carbohydrate as we mentioned earlier here and the protein and the lipid and the nucleic acid and the plant here produces from the photosynthesis process by using the inorganic compound or the carbon dioxide so the chemical equation here as you mentioned here this one we use the carbon dioxide this is photosynthetic equation and you get the uh, glucose this way so the carbon cycle here start from the we have two source the first source we call atmospheric carbon dioxide it is the source of the carbon in the atmosphere and the fossil carbon is mean as the source of the carbon is under the ground okay first of all we have the fossil carbon and after that the fossil carbon here get they lock the carbon atoms inside the molecules of the uh, natural gas this one the natural gas and the oil and the coal three things okay and after the people here uh, export the coal the oil and the gas here and get burned it up okay burn the fossil fuel all these things three things we call fossil fuel and burn it up to, so they release the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere or some part here they come from the plant respiration the plant release the carbon dioxide into the air or even deforestation or can that my time like bar or even human and animal respiration this way it is the process that human and animal release the carbon dioxide into the air it's just like the plant so the levels of the atmospheric carbon dioxide here will get increased 
and now so that we have only one process it is the photosynthesis to reduce the carbon dioxide in the air so it's stored in the land plant like this and it turns into the biomass and this biomass here get turned into the carbon into the soils as a humus or some parts of the biomass in the plant here will be the food for the animals and food for the human this way and when all this animal and plant get dead it will turn into the organic matter and the organic matter here sinks down deep into the ground it will turn into fossil carbon again so the cycle here the first cycle here is cycle on land okay but in the ocean the we have ocean in the ocean we have some organisms for example we have the uh, phytoplankton it's a small organism that can do the photosynthesis for example the group of algae okay the algae here will take the carbon dioxide in the air and put, and doing the photosynthesis and release carbon dioxide back by the respiration and it is this one is photosynthesis and after it will get produce the biomass and this biomass here get sink down deep when they get dead and turn into the sediment or the corn and after that this sediment here will turn into the fossil carbon again okay so this is the cycles of the carbon dioxide in case of nitrogen cycles the source of the nitrogen cycle in the air it is the N2 nitrogen in the atmosphere and after that they can be absorbed by some microorganism in the root of the root nodules of the legume the word legume means the group of bean nodules here means the pom rak so the nodules of the legume here we can use pom rak tour okay inside the nodules of the legume here we have the bacteria and that bacteria change the nitrogen gas in the atmosphere here into the nitrogen gas in the plant and in the bacteria but some part some, some part of the bacteria here can live in the soil so this one we call free living nitrogen fixing bacteria in the soils and after that the free living nitrogen in the soil here take the process we call nitrogen fixation so they turn the N2 into the NH3 plus or uh, NH4 plus we call ammonium and after that the ammonium here will be the food will be the nutrient for the plant to grow okay the other plant to grow when this plant grow they have the nitrogen as a protein part including in the cabbage for example this one is cabbage and the bean plant here these two plant here has been taken by the animals so animal eat the this kind of the uh, plant okay so they get the amino acid and protein it's a sort of nitrogen and and after that, this animal get dead or even take the defecation by what cup tie or elimination. So all the fe uh, the feces or even dead bodies of the animal here get digested and turned into the detritus. Okay, and this detritus can be digested by the decomposer and release it as ammonia again. So this cycle here will pass to the plant and animals. And the ammonia here can turn into another form of the nitrogen we call nitrate by the nitrifying bacteria this way and now that nitrate here also be absorbed by the by the plant and the nitrate here can be turned into the other form as n2 as a process we call denitrification or uh, by the bacteria we call denitrifying bacteria so the student, may, the student may be confused about the name of the bacteria and the process. So in short here, I will summarize for you. In case of atmospheric nitrogen turned into the ammonia, we use the process we call nitrogen fixation. And the bacteria we use here, we have nitrogen fixing bacteria. The tetris turn into the ammonium here by the composition process by the composer. Ammonium turned into a nitrate by nitrification by the bacteria we call nitrifying bacteria and the nitrate turn into the atmospheric nitrogen by the process we call denitrification by bacteria we call denitrifying bacteria so when you know these four terms of the bacteria here it is not one single bacteria but it is a groups of bacteria groups of bacteria okay 
Next one is phosphorus. The phosphorus cycle here starts from the rock phosphate. Okay, and after that, the rock phosphate here can be used. Okay, by the weather, the weather with the weathering rock. Okay, so they release the phosphate in the rock, into the water, and after that, the water they take the runoff, the surface runoff. Okay, from the rainfall here, and they carry the phosphate here into the, into the soil. The first one into the soil first. As an inorganic one, and after the water here dissolve the phosphate into a solution, and after that, this solution it contain phosphate ion like this, and they combine with the other ion, for example calcium. For example, you have calcium phosphate, and this calcium phosphate here get precipitate into the soils, and after they get collected in the soil layer, and after that when when the time get passed, and the rock here become uplift. They return into a rock phosphate again, but this cycle here is take a long time. It's million years, but some some cycle here be shorter. The phosphate in the in the soil here can be absorbed by the plant, so the plant turn the phosphate here as in organic form into the organic phosphate. For example, the DNA. And after that, uh, the plant here has been eaten by the animal. So the animal here eat the plant, and when they get dead. The plant and animals if we turn into the detritus, and the detritus it turn into the detritus walls in the soils and decompose into the uh, inorganic phosphate again. So this one is this cycle is quite short. So this one is cycles in the, in, in the living things, but this one is cycle that is not occur in living thing. But one key point it is the phosphorus cycle it is not occur in the air, not in the air. Sulfur cycles. The sulfur cycle here basically the main source come from the volcanic eruption. Okay, and there is sulfur dioxide. Like this, and they release into the air. The sulfur dioxide here turn into the sulfate ion. Okay, but some part of the sulfur dioxide here also come from the factory that used The coal with high sulfur, it just like lignite. So it's mean this one it is the lignite power plant. And after that, sul sulfate ion here turn into the sulfate in the air and get precipitate directly into the sulfate into the soil. But sometimes here they they can can be turned into the gypsum. The gypsum is calcium sulfate, and this calcium sulfate. Can be used in the farm. To increase the sulfate in the soils, okay, and the sulfate in the soil here can go down deep, and collected in the soil layer we call leaching process, okay, and the sulfate here can be turned into the organic sulfate, and the plant in the farm here can be the food for the animal. So the animal produce the protein. Protein require sulfur, and after that, when this one get dead, the sulfur return to the ground as the, uh, organic sulfur. Okay, and the organic sulfur here turn into many form. For example, turn into the, uh, lignite, the high sulfur coal or peat like this, and the organic sulfur here turn into the mineral. Okay, turn into the mineral and converted with some high sulfur bacteria. The min min the mineral sulfur here can turn into the sulfate, or and and even sulfate itself can turn into the mineral by the bacteria. This one we call purple sulfur bacteria. Okay, in summarize here, basically when when we compare the levels of a sulfur from a low sulfur to high sulfur fuel, the gas l o l i n e produce low sulfur, then go to the diesel and go to the coal, coal release highest amount of a sulfur, and the bacteria we talk about it is a purple sulfur bacteria, it turn the sulfate ion is supposed to be like this, okay, into the inorganic sulfur, it is the sulfur crystals. And atmospheric sulfur here can increase two things. The first one, they can increase the combustion. They can increase by the combustions of the coal, and it can increase by applications of gypsum in the farm. And the two source of the sulfur that are outside in the air it is atmospheric sulfur, and organic, and even inorganic sulfur in the soil. Next part, the lecture eight, it is about the definition of bi of biodiversities. Okay. 
basically we have three type of the definition in biodiversities. The first one we call ecological diversities. It is a combination of different biomes. Later we talk about the biome. For example, the terrestrial and aquatic. Terrestrial biome means the biome on land, and aquatic biome it is biome in the water. And the species diversities. This one means the uh, interaction between the different populations of the species in a specific area, even the plant. It can be the plant species, or even in the animal species, or even any other microorganism. It can be counted as a part of the species diversities. And the genetic diversities, this one shows that in one species, it can have many variables. Var not, not variable, sorry. Variability. Okay. In that population let's see the example so this one here you will see that in these pictures we have the mountain okay this one represent the aquatic uh, sorry terrestrial biome you can have here desert as a terrestrial biome and this is aquatic biome. As open ocean. And here some part student, you will see the river in here. It's a part of the fresh river, of fresh water, fresh water biome. And this in this picture here is inside the terrestrial biome in the uh, forest. This one can have a population of bear. This population of the rodent. It's a small organism like a fungi, mushroom, or the population of a woodpecker. And this is many species of plants. So you can see many species. So this is examples of the species diversities. And this one you can have many by all. Okay, but when you take a look into one the rodent here is a chipmunk, you can have made different genes. And this different gene represent different phenotype. Thank you.